Hey everybody, this is Darkseid. Welcome back to part 24 of our Dark Souls walkthrough. Okay, from where we left off last time, as you know, we just kind of finished up and Orlando, but I did not go ahead and kill the boss. The reason for that being is because I tried the boss once and really wasn't having much luck with it. So I decided to go ahead and uh, go get very a bit well. better kindling, then so we can have a few more share. Estus flasks to help you get Yours through some of the harder day. battles. Your so, we're going to skip to and Orlando, the ending the of it for right Lord now, and we're going to continue down so into the catacombs. The fire, cast away the dark, and listen and to this dude. The curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit an Orlando Been there. And acquire the Lord Vessel. Farewell. Framped is nothing if not annoying. Also, I'm also using a holy weapon here, and at this time, I've got it, what is it, divine plus five, and it's really just not cutting it. So yet another good reason to go ahead and go down into the catacombs, because after I finish the catacombs, I'm going to take a quick stop down in the Tomb of Giants in order to pick up the large divine number and see if I can't get this thing at least moderately better than what it is. It's got to be better than nothing because right now it's horrible. But it does do pretty well about killing and making sure they stay dead, these nice little skeleton guys here. This just only makes the catacombs just moderately easier. Mainly because you don't have to worry about these guys respawning and coming back all the time. The catacombs is very easily done without a holy weapon, however. Uh, all you really have to do is just find and eliminate all of the necromancers just as quick as you can. Because without them, the skeletons can't respawn anyway. I always be weary of the exploding skull theme that they got going on in here. You see, it catches me a couple of times because these guys are... You know, they give you narrow walkways and these guys are kind of in the dark and they're a little hard to see and you can start to hear them go off sometimes before you ever even see them. Down, boy. Okay, and then the tunnel off to our left here is going to be our first bonfire and also our very first necromancer. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to charge down there and try to get the drop on him before he has a chance to cast too many fire spells. And down he goes. Now pretty much all the skeletons from here past, even if I didn't have a divine weapon, no longer have the ability to just come back endlessly. Now these statues here, these you don't really have to worry about, but there are many, many of these things that have protruding spike traps attached to them. So constantly be 
on your guard. Now, as you can see over there to the right, there's actually, you can see the guy. He's holding one of the skull lanterns, but he's one of the necromancers. And we're getting ready to take him out the old fashioned way with ranged weapons. Or in this case, a good lightning spear. That is whenever you get the right spell. That's one thing, a reason why I like Lightning Spear, because it's got like a really, really good range on it. Always keep some sort of a bow on hand as well, if you can, if you've got the decks for it. In order to get some of these guys, because most of them can be hit with distance attacks if you know where they're going to be. Invincibility frames work to his advantage on that one. But really, the catacombs itself is fairly straightforward. It seems a little confusing with all of the uh, turns, turn pathways and whatnot, but uh, it's very linear. There are a few secrets, however, that we're going to try to explore in here as well. The artistry in here, however, was very well done. I was quite impressed the very first time I came through here. Still really am, no matter how many times I've played through this. Yep, we've cleared them all. Okay, now we're getting ready to come up here on... This is an absolutely wonderful snipe spot. You can see that light back there. That's another Skull Lantern, which means another Necromancer. And you've got the added benefit on this one that uh, he can't even... Ca or his spell range isn't quite this far. You'll actually see him cast fire spells, and they will come uh, up to kind of the doorway and then just fizzle out. course I wasn't thinking about that the first time he shot one I just thought well maybe I should get out of the way but all in all as you can see I was also using poisoned arrows there at the first hit him a couple of times and then he's got that counter going down on him shoot a few more arrows just to speed up the process Lots more exploding skulls into our right. <laughs> 
another one or a spike trap What I typically like to do with these guys, I just like to wait for them to get somewhat close and you, where you can see them starting to charge up for their detonate and then just kind of run off. So I try to keep near a door, that way I get some protection. Well, it looks like they took off. Oh, there he was. Oh, well, we'll just run through him. You can, however, use those things to kill the skeletons, which is kind of handy. Of course, if you haven't killed their necromancer, then it's only a mild setback for them. Now this area right here is really just to confuse people. You see this little section in the rock here, and right behind there, there's you saw the uh, bonfire that's located there. The bonfire is actually in a hidden room. I think the reason why they, and it's not even accessible from here. I think the reason why they did that, however, was just to confuse people, make you spend some time there wondering why you couldn't seem to get to that bonfire. See, spike trap all over the place. If they've got something that's moderately valuable or even slightly valuable, and there's one of those statues next to it, you can guarantee that that sucker shoots spikes out. See me stopping to consider here going down and doing the, uh, or getting the blacksmith first. He's really close to this area. But I decided now we should probably just go ahead and clear this, the rest of this out and then head down. Probably go get the second bonfire before we do that. Double whammy. Typically, though, if you can get right in the middle of them, you can get by without activating either one of them. The traps themselves really don't hurt that much. They're more of an inconvenience than anything else. secret area and a bit of a shortcut here. And of course you have to break the pots here before you leave. I think it's a requirement somehow. Crystal lizard ahead. Go. 
certainly thankful on this game that uh, the crystal lizards will appear until you actually kill them as opposed to demon souls where you had your one shot and if they disappear then that was it at least until you killed the boss and then you'd have one more shot and if you missed that well you were just sol because they were gone for good I said that was a shortcut, I'm not sure why. Really not a shortcut at all. Just a nice secret area with a little bit of loot in it. As I said, we don't actually want to go down. Not right at the moment. We're going to do that here shortly. Okay, and this is the secret area that leads to that bonfire that I was talking about just a little bit ago. And as you can tell just right before I entered here, there was a ladder up to the right, which will take us to the next uh, lever that we have to pull. As you can see here, I took out one thing where I was coming down off of this. Now this you have to be very careful on. Because if you walk off in the wrong spot, and it has to be angled slightly to the left, but if you walk off in the wrong spot, you'll miss this, and you'll wind up falling all the way down. You see, I missed part of it anyway. But as long as you at least hit one of them, you can safely make it down the rest of the way as long as you heal. Now this would be the way to Vamos, the blacksmith. The very first time I saw this guy, the, this particular intro, I thought he was a boss for certain. And I was thinking, all right, man, this guy looks cool. And then he tells you to get out of here. <laughs> you spoil my focus. Which confused me a little bit. Now, the advantage of Vamos here is he is the blacksmith who you will want to give all of your fire embers to. Um, he primarily handles that sort of thing, and uh, I don't. Or I think he can do a little bit just right off, just regular fire stuff with uh, plus five weapons up to fire five. 
Later on, you can find a, a large fire ember and I think a chaos ember in order to get a couple of different variants on that. I'm not huge on the chaos stuff because it's actually tied to the amount of holding humanity the damage is uh, as to how much you do and well I don't like leaving things up for grabs like that so but, uh, we'll go ahead and work on our little balder side sword here and give it a nice little fiery edge to it We're just going to go ahead and head back up. Easy way out of here. There's a quick way to the boss here if you don't mind wheel skeletons. And I do like or mind wheel skeletons. I, I don't like them at all. Okay, nice breakable wall here. Now, I don't recommend actually doing this particular room unless you have a holy weapon at this particular point in the game. This should be something that you come back to because it's got a lot of skeletons in here and a very particular way how to get out. So. If you don't have a holy weapon, it's best to just do this some other time. I do have a holy weapon, yet I'm going to come back to that later. There is a fairly... well, it's not really important, but uh, if you want to join the Dark Moon Covenant, there's a ring in there in one of the crypts that is vital to being able to talk to Gwendolyn and Anne Orlando to be able to even get that covenant. Okay, now what we're going to do here is we're going to work our way down and pick up, or rather kill, the last of the necromancers. Turn around. There we go. Should have just done a plunging attack on him. But no, we decided to wait until he just gets up here on his own. Skeletons on ladders. Sounds like a musical.
Now, you see that right there? That's actually a fall trap. There's one on the other side of it, too. And it will take you down into a small room with a black knight. So, unless you're really wanting to face him right at this particular time, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, I am going to actually do that myself here before long. Although I think I'm missing the first time. Because he can get kind of impatient waiting for you and leave that particular room, even though it's a great place to kill him. This is yet another way. Uh, that door right there looks very similar to the one that Vamos made to you. And this is out into a small cavern in the, the bottom here, full of wheel skeletons. And also the way to the boss. So we're going to go ahead and pick this stuff up. And we're going to go ahead and head back up because we don't want to do that yet. There's a couple of small things here that we need to pick up. Uh, one, we need to pick up the Gravelord Covenant. And two, we're going to, as I said, work on getting that Black Knight out of the way. Plus that, even though he's completely, well, he's not really useless in the fight. But uh, the fight is so completely ridiculous without him. I absolutely love getting the NPC summon here. And so I try to do it every time I, I come through here. Mainly just because I enjoy watching him kill the wheel skeletons once I first summon him. Alright, now there's a Titanite demon down there. And... Uh, it's in a very tight space, so what I like to try to do is, if, if you have arrows, good strong arrows, is just go ahead and take him down. It might take you a little bit of time, but you will eventually get through it, and it'll probably save you some deaths. Where are all this heavy armor? You gotta have that Havel's ring. Let me get my Titanite catching pole. And three eyes of death. Okay. To the Gravelord Covenant. Of course, you'll see this little extending coffin right here. Well, it gives you the option just to hop into it. And if you sit here and wait long enough, which is, I think, around 30 seconds to a minute, then they will eventually take you off to the Tomb of the Giants. And you'll actually get to see the room that you're going to fight Nito in later. At least this time around, he's uh, slightly more agreeable. Welcome to the Tomb of the Giants. Let's go talk to the big guy down here and see what he has to... Well, he doesn't really say anything. He just lays in his coffin and looks eerie. Which I suppose is his whole gig, so... Now joining this, if you're like every other covenant in here, you wind up getting a miracle. There doesn't seem to be any covenants that seem to be spells, uh, spells, yeah, that seem to be spell user friendly, but just about every one of them seems to be faith user friendly. So clerics, come one, come all. We love you all. Now you can offer up eyes of death to him in order to increase your rank. 
and I wasn't going to stay in this long enough in order to be able to get anything useful. But this is, as you said, saw there that we got the uh, Grave Lord Dance Miracle, and I think the second tier of that you get uh, if you offer him enough eyes, and it winds up being a, a great sword, does more damage, pretty much. And that is the strangest spell that I've ever tried to use. Uh, it tells you that you have 30 uses on this particular thing, but for some strange reason, every time you use it, it uses up 15 uses. Which seems to me to make absolutely no sense. If you're just gonna have it be a two-time cast deal, you should say that you got two uses on it and be done with it. And that will complete this part of our Dark Souls walkthrough. Remember, if you've liked these videos, please click the like button. And if you'd like to hear more of these, click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.